All right. So uh, I'm hoping that one of the things that you're noticing is that as we add on more theories throughout this semester, even though we're just kind of giving you a glimpse into that theory, highlighting the important aspects of them, um, you know, there's only so much we can go into every theory uh, in a short course, but hopefully I'm highlighting the most important parts. But one of the things I hope you're noticing is as we add on more of these theories, uh, you're seeing the connections. All of these are building a more comprehensive view of human development. Um, so no, no one theory is uh, enough when it comes to human development. Um, but uh, together, we're getting a bigger uh, picture of how to assess human development. Um, and putting all these theories together will help you in your uh, assessment process. Okay, so um, let's see. Let's look at uh, Binet and Wexler. They still have uh, these IQ tests. Um, also, uh, additional tests, multiple uh, emotional intelligences, and multiple intelligence multiple intelligences, emotional intelligences. Uh, Sternberg also looked at IQ, um, wisdom. Uh, we're going to talk about Sternberg's concepts of love, uh, but you've got Howard Gardner and uh, Coleman and um, so many different uh, types of intelligence. Um, so let's, let's look at the concept of intelligence. Intelligence testing began in 1904. Mm. French minister appointed a commission to which he gave the assignment to recommend a procedure for identifying children who were unable to learn in school. Alfred Benet was one of the members of this committee. Now, Alfred Benet developed the concept of mental age, or MA. In 1912, William Stern developed the term intelligent quotient. That's where we get the IQ from. Um, this is the individual's mental age divided by their chronological age, or CA, multiplied by 100. So we have IQ equals MA, mental age, divided by CA, chronological age, multiplied by 100. Um, so tests were later developed for soldiers in World War I and World War II. So somebody enlists or gets drafted. Where do we put these individuals so that uh, they can help the most? Um, should they be uh, working on machinery? Should they be uh, in the field? What, what should we be doing with them? Uh, it was really uh, the very first uh, concept of career testing. Now, external variables such as having developed English as a second language or one socioeconomic background impact scores on IQ and achievement tests such as the Stanford Binet. A lot of people confuse achievement with IQ. Achievement uh, is what you have learned. IQ is uh, intellectual ability. Um, one of the problems is that if individuals do not have access to appropriate resources, they cannot develop their innate intelligent abilities. Um, so uh, that's why I'm a big advocate of providing equal opportunity in all school districts. Um, age is often a factor in considering 
general mental ability. So the theory, uh, what's the difference between intelligence and IQ? Alfred Binet, one of the founders in the field of intelligence testing, defines the term intelligence as the tendency to take and maintain a definite direction, the capacity to make adaptations for the purpose of attaining a desired end, and the power of autocriticism or self-criticism. Spearman defined intelligence as the ability to educe either relations or correlates. Spearman's model looked at three aspects of intelligence, math, vocabulary, and mechanical skill. Freeman defined it as adjustment or adaptation of the individual to one's total environment, the ability to learn, the ability to carry on abstract thinking. Sternberg defined it in terms of mental activities involved in adaptation to shaping of and selection of real world environments relevant to one's life. Sternberg also talked about wisdom and intelligence. He outlined three concepts or types of intelligence in his triarchic theory. Number one, componential uh, or analytical intelligence, similar to IQ, experimental creative intelligence, creative and creativity and insight, contextual or practical intelligence, common sense, or what he termed street smarts. And then we have other individuals who are more recent. Howard Gardner defined it as the ability to resolve genuine problems or difficulties as they are encountered. He also wrote the book called Frames of Mind, The Theory of Multiple Intelligences. Gardner's identified eight various intelligences, and the list can be expanded further. They include linguistic, logical, mathematical, spatial, bodily, kinesthetic, musical, interpersonal, intrapersonal, and naturalistic. Uh, I'm wondering if any of you have read that book, Frames of Mind. You can comment on that if you have. In the 1990s, John Mayer and Peter uh, Salovey introduced the term emotional intelligence. This referred to uh, the individual's ability to understand their own emotions, the emotions of others, and to act appropriately in response. In 1995, uh, Daniel Goleman uh, popularized this concept in his book, Emotional Intelligence, Why It Can Matter More Than IQ. Wondering if any of you have read that book as well. What we usually hear when we're talking about IQ is testing. Um, Stanford Binet, the latest Stanford Binet scale responded to cultural changes and new research. The four primary components include verbal reasoning, abstract visual reasoning, quantitative reasoning, and short-term memory. The Wexler uh, intelligence scale for children, which is primarily what I used, um, as a school counselor, uh, uh, the WISC-3 or R, and they might have a new one out. Maybe somebody knows, do they have a, a 4, WISC-4? Uh, measures intelligence from 6 years old to 16 years old, 11 months and 30 days, which sounds pretty specific. Uh, two other similar tests include Wexler Adult Intelligence Scale, WACE, Wexler Preschool and Primary Scale of Intelligence. Um, the WISC-3 includes the following subsets. Uh, you can read through those. Um, one of the most interesting things that I find is there's always a struggle for school district resources because resources cost money. Um, I have found that there is a difference depending on who gives the IQ test. Uh, if they just aren't standardized 
written IQ tests if they have to be verbally uh, given. Um, I've often found that uh, students who are given an IQ test in school often score lower than students who are given a private IQ test by, say, a psychologist. Um, a lot of that has to do with school resources. It shouldn't be that way. Um, you should get very close to the same score. But when you're talking plus or minus two or three, and 130 is the cutoff for gifted, um, you know, one or two points can make a big difference. Uh, if you're talking about the other end of IQ, and you'll learn more about this in assessment, um, you'll learn about the standard deviations for IQ um, and the various tests, uh, but it's also resources uh, at both ends um, of the spectrum. So small differences in scores can make a big difference in resources. Wondering if any of you have had experience with this. I know we have school psychologists and uh, people who have been uh, studying uh, human development. And uh, I'd, like, I'd love to hear your opinion on this as well.